Welcome everyone to our YouTube channel here at Shimatsu Medical Systems Australia. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you find this information useful. Today we're going to discuss some technical aspects of how you can improve image quality and aim to have all radiographers understand their equipment a little better, to speed up their workflow and to achieve optimal imaging each time. Before we move on, I'll get you all to subscribe, like and share the information with your colleagues. Once again, thank you and I hope you enjoy the content. Welcome back to video number two of the Image Optimization Education Series. If you haven't had a chance to watch the first introduction video, find the link below and I'll also include all of the other succeeding videos there as well. So moving on, understanding the fundamentals of digital radiography is important. The high sensitivity detectors with refined pixel pitch, wider latitudes and lowered programmed exposures means that there is less range for error in terms of underexposing anatomy. Now is the time to ensure that an X-ray setup is technically correct and not be complacent with the factors that will hugely affect your resultant images. Some of you may have had feedback from radiologists regarding your images appearing noisy or grainy. These are often due to underexposed images, which are a result of not enough scintillation of information reaching the detector and unfortunately no amount of image processing can improve pixel readings that are simply not there. So be wary when setting up your FFD. Ensure the appropriate distance is being used as a 20 centimeter incorrect margin of error here can yield an underexposed image. To avoid underexposure whilst using AEC, ensure that both tube and patient's anatomy to be imaged is positioned in the center of the bucky. Take for example, a lateral shoulder projection. If the shoulder is positioned too lateral or too high on the erect bucky, away from the center AEC sensor, then the resultant image will have an adequate exposure of the lungs and ribs and an underexposed image of the scapula and humerus. Noisy images may also result if you select an incorrect protocol for a body part, for example, knee instead of a lumbar spine, leading to an incorrect image processing algorithm to be applied. Please note, that scatter correction algorithms are for non-grid examinations only and should not be used in conjunction with the grid. Grid suppression filters are programmed into the gridded examinations, so please do not try and reprocess gridded examinations with the scatter correction algorithm. Lastly, by not applying correct exposure considerations, for example, fluid in the lungs or edematous abdomen, an underexposed noisy image will be yielded. When assessing images, the bottom right hand corner of the image will display the exposure index, exposure index target and deviation index for achieving the perfect X-ray. The exposure index is the measure of the amount of exposure received by the image receptor. It is dependent on MAS, detector area irradiated and beam attenuation. An EI reliability is reduced if these previously mentioned factors are not applied and also when metals such as orthopedic implants are within the field of view being imaged. The EI is hence a relative exposure guide. An EI value is linear with dose, image quality and SNR. A low EI results in a low dose, low image quality and lowered SNR. High EIs gives higher dose, better image quality and higher SNR, and halving the EI will inherently halve the dose. Exposure indicator values are an average of the number of pixels within a collimated area and are relative to the amount of contrast within the image. An example in the latest Canon flat panel detectors from the X10 range requires an optimal EI for most body parts at approximately 225. Chest X-ray EIs using a grid is generally between 100 to 150. There are several different methods of defining whether to increase or decrease in exposure using EI or DI values. However, using the deviation index or DI is a more accurate representation of how far off the perfect exposure you are and should be used when amending exposures prior to repeating an X-ray image. The deviation index quantifies the difference between the actual EI and the EI target value. The DI is intended to be an indication to the technologist on whether the radiographic technique is appropriate for the specific body part. An optimal image is obtained when the actual EI and the target are equal. As there is no deviation away from the perfect exposure, the DI value will be zero. 
So to explain how to use these DI values and make them a functional tool, let's take a pelvic X-ray exposure as an example. We know that the exposure of 70 kV and 25 MAS is equivalent to 73 kV and 20 MAS, and is also equivalent to 75 kV and 16 MAS. For every step up in kV we make, we step the MAS conversely down. But to increase or decrease the amount of exposure, we'll keep one of the factors constant. If we were going to keep the MAS constant, if we were to press the kV button once, giving an increase in kV by 3 up to 73 kV, this is considered one step or increasing the exposure by 25%, which is also equivalent to increasing the DI by 1. If you were to press the kV button three times to achieve a kV of 80 kV, this is assisting to change the DI of the exposure by three steps and hence increasing exposure by 100%. In digital radiography, contrast is still maintained at higher KVs and very little MAS values, which contradicts what we first understood of contrast during film radiography. Film screen and computed radiography saw that the increase in KV would yield a flatter lower contrast image. This is not the case in DR. So what do we change, KV or MAS? It is recommended by the manufacturer of most flat panel detectors to preferentially apply a higher KV technique as it increases the detective quantum efficiency, or in layman's terms, the readability of the detector to optimise signal to noise in the resultant image. You will notice that a lot of the program exposures in your unit have a very short MAS. This allows for reduced absorbed dose in patients while allowing the digital detectors to still maintain a level of detector scintillation. So what can be done about the flatter looking images? Keep in mind that the programming of image settings plays an important role here. Protocols may have been purposely programmed to appear flatter to align to preferences from reporting radiologists. But if this is not the case and intermittent images appear flat and grey, this can be caused by overexposure. Traditionally, high KVs on film screen would yield a flat, low contrast image due to latent scatter detection. But now digital radiography detector registers more scatter radiation developed from the use of high MAS factors. MAS has proportionately less scatter radiation than that produced by higher KVs, however, there is actually more detectable scatter radiation information at higher MAS. It's true that high KVs have higher amounts of scatter, as we have been taught. However, there is less detectable scatter on digital detectors. However, more detectable scatter from high MAS exposures are registered. This is often a mistake made by most radiographers. In pursuit of getting a quick calculation of MA times the seconds to view MAS on the generator, the MAS converter button is pressed. The system, unfortunately for technicians, reselects the shortest time possible on the system for that preferred MAS and hence increases the MA unknowingly to the radiographer. We will discuss this further in a moment. So let's back up and revise what we know about X-ray generation. An electron cloud is generated at the cathode. The size of the electron cloud depends on how high the MA is. The energy is discharged towards a focal spot on an anode and an X-ray beam is created. Now imagine that the electron cloud is a herd of unicorns and when they are released, like at the start of a horse race, they move out of the barriers all at the same time with speed and power. But if the finish line is reduced to a small narrowing like a gate, not all unicorns can get through at the same time. And hence, like a large electron cloud, not all the power and speed can be captured and the resultant X-ray beam will be less efficient. This is what is happening with large MA and short exposure time. This is also the cause of reduced tube life as the anode is increasingly being overheated with a large electron cloud. But be mindful that the solution is also not a small MA with a long time. Quality images will be achieved with a good balance of both factors so that they are just right and so that your radiologist is given optimal imaging to report from. In terms of collimation, an open collimated field inherently weakens your X-ray beam and produces more detectable scatter radiation rather than redirecting to a collimated area of interest. 
your EI and DI will also be affected and not reflect the optimal reference indicators to govern exposure parameter changes for repeat imaging. Now, when we look at exposures on the generator prior to exposing, most radiographers like to view KV and MAS values directly from the generator, normally because we can't do the quick maths in our heads for the MA in seconds. The downside to this is that the generator has this automatic function, as previously mentioned, to use the shortest time available and hence will automatically increase the MA to expose with the shortest time. This can mean for a 25 MAS exposure, it can expose at the default setting of 400 MA and 6.25 milliseconds when we leave the generator setting to view MA and time, or 800 MA and 3.125 milliseconds if the MAS conversion button is pressed. The 800 MA resulting image will have a flat and washed out grey appearance with a lack of contrast and bony trabecular detail. So don't wait for a surprise change in MA when pushing up the MAS. Leave the generator and increase the KV to maximise the detective quantum efficiency or increase the time itself. This will assist in maintaining the optimal contrast in your images. So as discussed, leave the MAS conversion function and adjust KV in time. Further recommendations for image processing that should be mentioned are utilising the ROI function to change the windowing, especially in MSK, is a great reprocessing function that does not alter the radiologist's ability to change the window width and window length range. Do not use the mouse to auto the window levels, as this will increase frustrations for your radiologists. The brightness and contrast function from your tool sections can be adjusted without mitigating the window width and window length functions for the radiologists. If correct exposure techniques are used, then the need for further edge enhancements are not required. These preferences will be preset in program settings to align to radiologist preferences. So thank you everyone. That wraps up video two of the image optimization series. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up rating and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening and we'll see you back for video number three.